Are you looking to get more out of your SAT prep books? Well, buckle up guys, because I'm going to show you how. Hey, it's Jen. I'm a test prep tutor helping students learn all the ins and outs of standardized exams. And today's video is actually inspired by a Reddit question. I see this type of question asked all the time on there. And this Redditor was super frustrated because they picked up all of the best SAT books, uh, the ones that I recommended, and they've gone through some of the exercises, but their scores haven't budged. Well, today I'm going to diagnose that issue with you and share some of my tips for how you can get more out of your SAT books. Before we get into this topic though, I want to remind you to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell. It's completely free, but this way you'll be notified of all of our test taking secrets when they come out. Okay, I think for this video, I'm going to break it up into two sections. We're first going to talk about why this may be happening and why it's such a prevalent issue because to solve a problem, right, we have to know what's causing it. And then I'm going to share four practical tips with you for how you can get more effectiveness out of those prep books. So to start, let's explore the why. I actually have two theories here. The first is a lot of students may actually be misusing their books. Not every book is intended to be an exercise book. So if I'm gonna use this one as an example, this Meltzer Critical Reader book that I recommended in my best SAT books video, this is not, for example, a workbook. There's not a lot of questions in here. Really, the intended purpose is for you to learn the principles and then apply them to college board practice questions. Okay, so make sure you are using the book for the right purpose. And then my second theory comes down to the nature of workbooks. It's the difference between drills and application. So a good workbook needs to isolate concepts. They distill really big, complicated ideas into bite-sized pieces, and every chapter or lesson is really dedicated to one of those puzzle pieces. The idea is once you master each piece, you can then put them together to solve more complex problems. That sounds pretty easy in theory, but then in practice, it's actually quite difficult. The truth is drilling isolated concepts can give you a false sense of mastery, you know what to do because you are told what to do. If you're working on a chapter on factoring or a chapter on subject verb agreement, your brain is automatically in that space and you can do these questions very easily, but you guys know that's not how the SAT works. It is a very application heavy exam. All of the concepts are jumbled together and mixed up and you have to know what tools to pull out of your toolbox. So that requires a much higher level of critical thinking. Now that we've explored the why, let's talk about the how to fix it. But before we get into the tips, I want to set one ground rule. And that is when I say study, what I mean is really focused, dedicated study time. Okay, so you need to be as free of distractions as you possibly can be. And yes, guys, that means taking your phone and putting it in a different room because phones are there to distract you. And during the time you set aside a study, you have to focus on the task at hand. With that out of the way, let's talk about the tips. Tip number one, I want you to space out your studying and take frequent breaks. I know a lot of us are super eager that once we get our hands on these books, we dive right in and we blow through a whole bunch of chapters and a lot of practice questions. But a lot of times we forget what we learn very shortly after. So a better strategy would be to pace yourself and be consistent over a longer period of time. Now, sometimes you may only get through a couple of chapters a week. And let's take this book again as an example, because this is the densest of all of the books that I recommend. I would say in a book like this, you may want to budget about two to three chapters a week. Sometimes you'll even work through less than that. For example, there's a chapter in here on big picture. It's one of my favorites, but it's like 30 pages long. And if in a week you can get through just that one chapter, but you really master the principles and you can apply them to real questions, guys, that is a week well spent. And then it's also really important that you take frequent breaks because during the breaks are when you give your brain a chance to move all of that information from short-term memory into long-term memory for longer-term retention. And then I'll just give one additional tip here. I want you to, as much as possible, split up your study time between all of the sections evenly. So let's say you want to study for three hours on a given day. 
rather than focusing all three hours on one subject area, I think it's better to budget an hour for each of the different sections. Of course, you can play around with the different time allocation to see what works best for you, but that will be a good starting point. Tip number two, try restating the main points in the lessons into your own words. And I want you to do this in two ways. First, write it down, write the summary physically into a notebook of the main point of the lesson. And then once you have a good grasp of that, try speaking it out loud. You can teach the lesson to a friend or a parent or your pet, right? Whatever works, but once you speak it out loud, you can hear yourself express this idea. If you can do that well, then you know you've mastered that concept. There's actually a crazy stat out there that says you only retain 10% of what you read. Now, I'm not gonna put a whole lot of weight on that number, but I definitely agree that the more touch points you have and the more different these touch points are with the materials that you're learning, the greater your mastery is going to be and the higher retention you're going to have. So give that summary a try. Also a benefit of this, a side benefit of it, is that you are basically turning the learning experience into a reading exercise on its own. You guys know that on the reading section, one of the most important skills you can develop is the ability to summarize a passage into one sentence that captures the main idea. So if you do that as you learn, you are naturally going to improve that skill. Okay, tip number three, I want you to jump around within the book. So you're going to go through the book and read all of the lessons. And as you do, you can certainly annotate the lessons and take notes in the margins. But once you get to the questions, I would leave it blank. I would show my work in a separate notebook and leave the original questions blank because once you move your way through the book, you can then come back and flip to a random page and see how much of that lesson you've retained. A lot of times we have this one and done mentality when it comes to prep books, but really if you give it a chance, you can get so much more value out of it by revisiting the lessons that you've already learned. All right, guys, tip number four, you saw this one coming. I want you to track your mistakes. You can do this by hand in a physical notebook, or you can do it digitally via Excel or Google spreadsheet or something like that. The idea here is to uncover patterns in the types of mistakes you're making so that you can prevent them from happening once and for all. Maybe you are somebody who makes a lot of distribution or negative sign errors. Maybe you consistently misread the question because you miss keywords. Or maybe one of your reading answers has one of the characteristics I mentioned of bad reading answers. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out that video. That one's going to provide a lot of insight into how to spot bad reading answers. But whatever the case may be for you, this exercise will provide a lot of clarity into the type of test taker you are and the types of mistakes that you make. So there you have it. Those are my best tips for how you can get even more value out of these already awesome SAT prep guides. Let me know what other issues you're struggling with because I want to be a resource to help you do the best you possibly can on this test. If you like this video, give it a like, please share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel and hit that bell. And I will see you guys very soon. Bye.